but this I really want to focus on. This shows me how many requests have had 200 status codes, how many have had 404s, how many have had 500s. And if we go to that side of mine, it might be still different. So I've got 200s, 301s, 302s, 403s, 404s, 500s, and 503s, and I can see the count of them. Well, not only can I see the count of them, but let's say I was curious about, well, what's been getting 50, 500 internal server errors? I click on that link, and Fusion Reactor takes me to a page that shows me the pages that had errors. 500s in Cold Fusion are errors. So these pages had errors. And if I look at these, I might get some idea from looking at them, but I really don't see why these would be bad. I can also see up here when they've happened, because maybe there's some pattern. Maybe they tend to happen at certain times or on a certain interval, or they're clustered around a certain time, but I don't see anything there. Now, one of the really cool things about Fusion Reactor is I can dig into these requests. So I'm going to click on this one and see what it's about. And I can see not only the URL and how long it took and what IP address it came from, but I can see other stuff like the how many bytes were sent, the data transfer rate, time to first byte, time to last byte, good stuff. How many queries happened, if any. That one didn't have any, but sometimes you'll find yours do. How much CPU time was spent on the request. Now that was 647 milliseconds, of which 546 were CPU time. That might be interesting. That request had some kind of relatively high rate of CPU usage, but let's keep going. I can see the headers, I can see the cookies, I can see the queries, I can see lots of cool stuff, including, check this out, if the page had an error, I can see what the error was. All right, so this one had an error, undefined WC session cook. I don't I have no idea what that's about, but I can see that it was in a custom tag called, or a CFC stored in the custom tags directory called portcullis. Some of you may know what that is. It's a... Um, web application firewall for cold fusion free if you haven't heard of it check it out google port Cullis and you'll find it anyway it seemed to have had an error at line 109 of its code and this was the error and so i could look into that and find out that's what it's about but the cool thing is you see i can see the error i don't need to have an error handler set up to email me i don't have to have been the user that got the error fusion reactor will tell me a page had an error here's the error go look into it here's the line of code go knock yourself out and it'll keep that information for as long as Cold Fusion stays up and running. And so I can see errors going back days, 17th, 16th, 15th, 14th, 13th, 12th, 11th. You know, I'll just pick this one and see what its error was. And that had some other server exception, parsing a query string. I don't see what's wrong with that. But sometimes you'll be able to make sense of it. Sometimes you won't be able to necessarily do anything with it. But anyway, that was the status codes page. And that was looking at the 500s. Maybe you'd be interested in looking at your 404s. What pages are being requested that got 404s? Let me show you a couple examples there. If I pick a 404 page and wait for the graph to come up. And again, I don't see any particular pattern. They seem kind of random. And I'll pick something that looks weird like, well, this, you know, call to the JSP, connector JSP, FCK editor. It's trying to call a file that fortunately was not found. Maybe I'll be wondering, who'd this come from? Well, there's the IP address. Maybe that's not enough. Let me look at the headers. What user agent was it? Hmm, it was Googlebot. So somehow Google has a link to this page. And so they're probably going to be coming often. Now, let me just throw out there. That's if this is legitimately Google. It's totally reasonable, not reasonable, but possible that a bad guy who's trying to break in will say in his headers that he's Google to throw me off the trail. So you can't 100% trust these. That might not really be Google. So you might want to investigate that. You could take the IP address and look it up, and sometimes it'll say whether it's Google or not. IP addresses can be spoofed as well. So you don't want to put too much stock in all this stuff, but you know it points you in the right direction. And the point is, is that uh, I can also see that there's no referrer no referrer, for those who know what that means, if there was a referrer and if it was a URL on my website, then this 404 is coming from mistake in my site. The, the, 40, the referrer page would be where the link was. The user clicked the link, came to this page, but they came from the referrer page. But if there's no referrer, then that means they didn't come from a page on my site 
and it probably was either a user typing in a URL and hitting enter or a spider or a bot or a hacker calling the URL directly. They're just calling this URL directly. It doesn't exist. It got a 404. It got handled. 